Now, I'd uh, like to relate a story for you. It's about uh, the man who wore tails and uh, Bruce Breland, the one I call the Black Elk. Now, one morning in the springtime in the early 1970s, these two boys got together again. By 10.30 in that morning, they had cleared up some of the activity that they had to take care of, and the rest of the morning was free. What that meant was they could get around to the real business that they had to do. So they jumped in the car and headed towards the river. They got on the parkway, went across the Fort Pitt Bridge, veered right off the bridge getting on Carson Street. Now from there, you could see the Monongahela River, the Allegheny River, and it's coming together to form the Ohio River. And they was proceeding west along Carson Street down along the Ohio River. They're looking for a place to pull over so they could collect river water. Now there was some interest in them things even back then in them days. Now the problem I understand is a lot worse. But back then we knowed that it was time to pay attention to it. And so what happened was we was listening to songs. You might recall the singer Randy Newman singing about the Cuyahoga River down by Cleveland. Lord can make you tumble. Lord can make you turn. The Lord can make you overflow, but the Lord can't make you burn. Burn on, Big River. Well, anyways, we got down there, and we seen a place. We could pull over the car, and we could probably step over a few things down there and get close to, to the water. And as we done that, it worked out just like we expected. And we seen this piece of concrete jutting out, jutting out into the water, stunk, stuck halfway in the bank, and jutting out in the water. It was a perfect place to get out there and scoop up that water. And we hurried down there, and I got out on that rock. Bruce gave me the jaw. I scooped up that water, raised it up to the sky so I could admire the color. And right when I done that, the black elk took that Polaroid camera from around his neck, pointed it at me, and took a picture. And right as we was doing this, we heard this voice, Sharky, Sharky. We thinking, who's he talking to, this man waving his hat, coming at us? Looking around, we didn't see nobody. We figured, yeah, yeah I was too skinny to be a guy called Sharky. <laughs> I figured he must be referring to Bruce or the Black Elk. Anyway, we didn't move. We was observing all water, and the man got closer. He seen we ain't moving away. And then finally he slowed down and started walking, but he kept screaming, Sharky, Sharky. We just looked at each other, the black elk and I, and he came closer and he said, What are you boys doing down here? You ain't allowed down here. And he was looking at me. And I said, Well, we was down here collecting water. Figured the water belongs to everybody, don't it? He said, don't you get smart with me, young fella. And Bruce, the black elk, stepped up and said, we're collecting water to see what color the water is. That's all. We don't, we don't mind. Never mind. It pays no never mind. Then he said, well, Sharky, if that's all you're doing down here, then you just scram out of here and I won't say no, nothing to nobody. Be all right. Don't look like nothing's harm down here. You from Carnegie Mellon? The Black Elk said, yeah. As a matter of fact, I was from Carnegie Mellon, and so was he. That seemed to simmer that guy down a bit. And he turns around on his heels, and he heads back the way he was, 
don't know where it came from. The black elk and I started going back towards the car. And as soon as that man was out of earshot of us, I said to Bruce, that's the first time anybody ever called you Sharky? Bruce split a grin wide is that West End Bridge. And he said, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Sharky. Anyways, we got in the car and we had what we was looking for. We had what we was looking for. We had that water. And we had our picture. And we had done our business. We got in that car. We went back to Carnegie Mellon University. And we had a fine day. We was in a good mood all day long. And we was there all day. And then we ate dinner there together. And a bunch of other folks came around. And the black elk was telling stories about collecting the water. We got the water out, and they're all looking at the water. Having a fine time, a right fine time we did. And we spent all night together, too, talking about art, this and that and the other, till it got dark and late. And then black elk got, got back in his car, and he drove home. And I went to where I was living. And we had a right fine day collecting river water. Now, as far as I know, there was only one person that belonged to that American River Watercolor Society, and that was the Black Elk himself. I consider myself to be a member of it, but I never signed no papers like that. Uh, nothing like that, mind you. But in my mind, I feel a part of that great society. And we had a fine day, and I want to thank you all for listening to my story. And I'll be getting on now. <laughs>